Howdy everyone, my name is Avram Plager and welcome back to my Fusion 360 tutorials for CAD design. Um, so I do have a special announcement at the end of this video, so uh, please stay till the end. Um, but this tutorial will be actually a pretty fun tutorial. I'll be showing off um, some of the things that I did in my previous tutorial with the uh, whole feature and also showing you how to use uh, another tool that's fairly similar. Um, we'll be learning how to create inner threads on an object to make a bolt or a nut. Um, we'll also learn how to make outer threads, um, and we'll also learn how to make uh, knurling patterns, which are useful if you're making hand-driven bolts. Um, and also, if you're 3D printing threads, most of the time you don't want to use um, you don't want to use an actual screw shape. You want to have a hand-driven bolt. So, if you are 3D printing, um, this tutorial is going to be very good for you. Um, otherwise, this tutorial is also very good because it's teaching how to make threads which are integral to a whole lot of different assemblies. Um, so to begin we'll just start by creating a box and we'll go on our XZ plane as usual and we'll just set this to a 50 by 50 and now with that um, we'll extend this upwards also to 50 and then we'll set this to a new component and we'll say OK. Now to create inner threads we'll actually click on this face and we'll click our hold tool and that'll bring up the dialog. You want to set this at the center of your face and it'll automatically snap there um, and now you can see you have a diagram here of what your whole tool is. So you can see we can have a counterbore tool which sets a little bit of a start point um, and then the actual hole. You also have a countersink which is angled or sloped downwards into the hole. For the hole tap type which is the body you have simple I also have clearance, which gives you some amount of uh, clearance between the actual hole and whatever uh, it's designed for. You have tapped, which creates a thread. We can also um, take our screw and we can make it slightly larger. So we'll actually take this and um, we'll make this larger by going back to our simple feature and then editing the size down here. If you click here, you can open up a dialog that'll allow you to change to, say, a 22 millimeter screw. That'll be easier to see, so I'll switch to that for now. And make sure you click Modeled. This actually models the screw. If you don't have that selected, it'll just show a preview. Um, I never use just the preview, but if you're doing further models and you don't want that to get in the way, you can use that. You can also have a thread offset, which sets the thread to only uh, operate on a certain level. So if you want the thread to go all the way down, you can set that. But if you only want it to go a portion of the way into the hole, you can do that. You also have taper threaded which only threads the top portion. So we'll go back to uh, tapped for now. We'll set this to full. And you can either choose a flat tip or an angled tip. I like to choose an angled tip because it makes sure that the hole does have enough clearance. Um, and I also like to have a countersink because if you're, um, if you're screwing bolts in or screws or anything of that matter, you do want to have some uh, clearance that allows you to gently guide the screw into the hole. With that, we also have our designation of screw. So for an M17 screw, you have M17 by 1.5 and M17 by 1. M17 by 1.5 is a far looser screw than M17 by 1. Do note that if you switch to M17 by 1, It'll take more revolutions to screw something in. However, that screw will be lodged in far more securely. 
you also have class for other types of screws um, mostly for thinner screws you'll have both the 6H and a uh, 6H 4G I believe and that allows you to make either a thinner or um, or larger clearance so as you can see this live updates to anything that you need and again we'll choose a fairly large screw we'll choose 20 millimeters um, and that allows us to again uh, have some better viewing capabilities of what our screw is we'll set the countersink to far larger to say 25 and now that allows us to have um, our screw set up if you already have a hole in your object then you can use the tool I'll show in a few minutes um, then we'll say OK. Now you can see we have an angled cone inside, the threads pre-tapped, and a countersunk hole. Now what we'll do is we'll get that out of the way, and we'll create a cylinder. Our cylinder will be just again on our XZ plane. And we'll place the center point a little bit out. We'll set this to a 50 millimeter diameter cylinder. And we'll shoot this up uh, about 100 millimeters. You can do more than that, but at minimum I would do 100 if you're just starting out with threads because it gives you uh, some time to have a bit more viewing capabilities. Now you can say OK. Now we'll take this, click on the circular face, go to your Create tab, and click Thread. Remember, like in our uh, last part where we use the hole function, you need to select modeled. And you can see now we have an isometric profile. We have a bunch of different um, screw threads. Uh, I am not familiar with all of the different types of threads that you have. I'm only familiar with isometric profiles because I've worked with a lot of different uh, tools in my past. I've had a lot of mechanical engineering experience. Um, and I've run into a lot of isometric profile screws um, but most of the other ones you won't run into unless you go into specific uh, areas of engineering so just stick to isometric profiles for now if you'd like do uh, your own research into what all the other threads mean but with that our size automatically sets to whatever diameter we have designation again M50 by 3 M50 by 2 and M50 by 1.5. This is a very, very, very thin screw. Um, and this would be very hard to place or to manufacture unless you're machining this. So just for general viewing purposes, I'll set this to M50 by four. Our class, we have 4G, 6G, which is that looser style of thread um, that gives you a little bit more clearance, but the thread does tend to wobble around a bit. Or you have 6G, which is quite tight, and um, if you are 3D printing, I would select 4G, 6G, and if you're machining, I would select 6G. You also have right-hand or left-hand screws, um, and that's all the settings there. This will remember the size, um, so if you have another screw that you're making, the next selection that you would make will remember that size. So I, I wouldn't click this because this tends to mess you up in the future. Um, but that's it with that part of it. So you can click OK. Now if we want, we can click the center here. And we'll just make a hole in there, a standard hole uh, that goes all the way through. We'll set that to the center. We'll set it as a simple hole, flat and simple and then we'll just drag this all the way down you can drag this further down just to make sure and then you can click ok now what we can do is we can click on the inner circular face and we'll click thread and now you can see this sets a thread on the inside now click modeled 
And once that loads, you'll see we have a thread both on the inside and outside of our screw. This is again an isometric profile. Designation M17 by 1.5. We can actually set this larger to an M18. And now we'll select OK. Now we'll try making a knurling pattern. And the way we'll do that is we'll take the top face and we'll extrude it upwards. 30 millimeters. And then we'll say okay. Now what we can do is we can take out a coil component and want the coil to be drawn on the top face here and the center there and then the diameter to the diameter of this uh, circle. So we realize that's um, a little bit off so what we need to do is we need to uh, go into our components and cancel this and we need to redo this component so we'll go back and say coil set it back on the face and then in the center there and we realize we do have a problem which is uh, preset by these thread component so we'll say escape and we'll actually delete this extrude And then I'll make an entirely new component to show the, uh, the knurling pattern. So to do that, we'll take out a cylinder and we'll set it on the XZ plane again. We'll make this one just 25 millimeters for center. And then don't uh, extrude this too much. Just extrude it up um, 25 millimeters is fine. And say new component. And then click OK. Now we'll say create and coil. Then we'll click on the top face, go to the center, and then set this on the circumference. And now you can see this opens up a coil. We need to make we do need to make some drastic changes. We need to change the section size to triangular internal change the section size to one millimeter then take this component and move it down there and then set the revolutions to 0.2 this makes sure you only have um, 0.2 of a revolution on the actual circumference and I'll show you why you want this. So now the diameter is set, um, that's all good. Nothing else we need to change here, and you need the operation to be cut. So we'll say OK. And you can see now we have a section cut out of our cylinder. To make this easier, we'll hide our first two components so that we have some easier viewing access. Now we just say create, and we'll create a mirror of this uh, component here by going into our timeline and selecting the coil. Now the mirror plane that we want to mirror it on is the YX plane. And we see that this is the outside of our shape. So we'll say cancel, and we'll construct an offset plane from our XY plane. And we do need to go into our top view to actual or to actually orient this. So zoom out until you have both objects in view, set it to your top plane, and then move this until it's roughly uh, centered on there. And now I can say OK. Now what we need to do is uh, mirror that component. So we'll take this and we'll set that as a mirror and the mirror plane that we want is this plane here and we see that creates the pattern that we want you want to have two cuts made of exactly the same shape that are touching at one corner and now we'll say okay 
And now what we'll do is we'll create a circular pattern, but the axis we want it on is a line drawn through the center here. So we do need to create a sketch and the sketch actually needs to be in the center there. So before we do that, we will actually take and make a hole in the top of this face. So we'll press escape to get out of our sketch. We'll click on this face and we'll create a hole. We only need a quite a small hole to make this pattern. So make sure this is in the center of your shape. And set the diameter quite small. And you don't actually need this hole to go all the way through. So we'll click OK. And then we'll construct an offset plane from our YZ plane. And we'll set this to be in the center um, of our cylinder there. So now we can say OK. We'll create a sketch on this plane here. And you can move around so that you can then take your line component and set it there. Now we can finish our sketch. And what we need to do now is create a circular pattern. And the components we need to select are the coil and the mirror. And the axis that we need it on is this circle here. Now you can see it's created some components there, but we need a lot more than that. I would say 15 at minimum. But if your computer can handle it, I would go up to 20. However, for the purposes of this and that my computer is already going slow, um, we'll set it to 17. Make sure the angular spacing is set to full and say OK. Now, once that loads, which it may take a while, And the screen may um, may fluctuate a little bit, um, but you have to figure that Fusion 360 is doing a lot of calculations right now. It's actually pinpointing, and there we go. That's everything. So this is our knurling pattern. If you want a finer pattern, you can set more on that circular pattern, but this is good for now. So now what we need to do is we need to get rid of the hole and get rid of the sketch. So all we need to do is take this sketch, say delete, and wait for that to um, fully go away. Which again, with the knurling pattern, it is taking quite a while. And then all we need to do is take this face and extrude it upwards to, to when it matches the uh, face here. Then you can say okay. Then you can see a very neat and pretty uh, knurling pattern. We'll show our other components. We'll go back to our home view to show all those. Now you can see the three objects that we've made. We have the inner threads made from a hole with the countersink. We have the inner threads and outer threads made from the uh, thread tool. And then we have the knurling pattern made from a lot of different components. And with that, um, my announcement is that I am actually doing a playthrough of a game called Five Nights at Freddy's Joy of Creation. Um, it's likely that a lot of you have already seen a playthrough of this, but I figured uh, I downloaded the game the other day, and I figured I might as well diversify my channel. Um, so please let me know if you guys actually like that content. If you do, I'll do more playthroughs of that. However, that is not going to cut down at all on my current content. That's just going to be a, an addition to diversify the, the type of contents that I make. 